So we're in life management and we're in chapter four, uh, set last section, section uh, four. And we're gonna be talking about how to relate to your fellow workers. Chapter four um, is about your job situation. When you get uh, first get a job and you have to relate to your boss and now you have to relate to your fellow workers and um, you know, in the midst of all this, maybe your job is just a stepping, stepping stone to another better job later on. But the Bible says to do everything with all of your heart, you know, for the glory of God. And everything you do, put, put your whole heart into it. And, and each, each stepping stone as you go through, God will open the doors. Maybe this will just be a job for a short time, or maybe it'll be a job that you wanna keep for a long time. So, but if so, there's, it's certain that you'll have fellow workers or those um, workers alongside of you or even contractors with you, you know, at that point that you need to relate to. And so it's basically pretty um, common sense, but it's also very biblical. It's how do we relate to people, people that we're working with or students, you know, our fellow students, you know, or, you know, even relating to our brothers and sisters in Christ or our family, right? So let's talk about fellow workers. Okay, the first one talked about John. He was in real estate and he was looking for this, you know, basically this this good client. He was looking for a new client and this, this um, a guy, he was on the floor, actually John was on the floor and a guy came in and um, basically says, wow, you know, that he was, he was um, wanting to sell this property and he was, and John was all excited, but then he found out he was already had another, um, another realtor that had already started process on this. And so then he's like, oh, you know, well, he could have just said, okay, I'll help you. I'll, I can be your realtor. That realtor is not any good or whatever. But instead he looked at it and said, you know, um, I don't want to take a client away from a fellow worker. So um, he related, um, related him back, you know, to that other realtor. And so in doing that, he felt sad that he would really um, miss out on this client. But come um, after that, another client came in and he, um, he had a better opportunity. Isn't that what God does? So don't, you know, don't, when you feel something in your heart is wrong, you know what's wrong, it's the Holy Spirit showing you. And always be reasonable and always be kind to others and to those fellow workers, right? Selfishness is the root of all sin and it ruins relationships, doesn't it? So try not to be focused on yourself. You know, help your fellow workers. Try to see a co-worker's point of view and be willing to prove, be proved wrong. You know, say like, not say, oh, you're a know-it-all, you're always right. Be willing to be proved wrong. Um, do not blame others for your mistakes. You know, never do that. And admit when you're wrong. You know, so um, be a coworker who cooperates, cooperates with your other. Do things together. Do things, help them and they will help you. And learn from others. Don't be a know-it-all. You know, um, the scripture says here, well, actually, um, I don't know if it's scripture, but it says, every man in my superior is some way is some way, there's some way, thing I can learn from him. So I think, oh, that was given, was given um, as a quote. You know, every, every person is, you know, when you think, when you meet somebody, there's, there's a, something you can learn about every person that you meet. Do not step on others to get ahead or play politics with people. So, um, it's a major threat in the workplace at playing politics when one person wants to get ahead. So never do that. So um, a lot of people will use underhand schemes, you know, and I was working um, with a bunch of those 50 nurses when I worked for the American Red Cross, and some of the nurses would scheme against each other because they wanted to get, you know, to get the, the better job or so, you know, and it, it got to be like um, little clicks, clicks of, little clicks against each other. And I was so like not into that and just focusing on, on what God would have me to do and to encourage them, but never get into that clicks, clicks with, with your coworkers. 
want some coworkers against other coworkers. You don't want to do that. Do not go butter up the boss, you know, so that, that they'll you'll be actually getting on um, the good side. You want to, of course, you want your boss to, to relate to your boss in a, a good manner, but don't act like you're buttering them up and everything in front so that you can be uh, the favorite above your coworkers. So the Bible says, well, the Bible says that the first the Lord is on your side. There's a scripture here that says, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whatsoever he will. So basically he said, you know, God will turn the heart whatsoever way he will. So pray, you know, pray for your boss, but pray also for your coworkers. So um, leave your, always leave your case with the Lord and the Lord will not fail you. He never fails you. So watch your tongue in the midst of working with your coworkers. You know, I hear coworkers using all kinds of um, bad languages. And I, even as when I was working as a nurse quite a few years ago, you know, and you'd see them, you know, and in their times off and using this language like, oh, is this appropriate? You know, stay out of that. And the multitude of words, the Bible says, in the multitude of their words, there is sin, right? But he that refrains his lips is wise. So in the multiple, if you're talking too much and you're giving too much information, you're probably going to lead in you into sin, is what it's saying. So in the multiple of words, don't sit around talking and gossiping about each other, right? <clears throat> Many things are left better unsaid. Even a fool, when he holds his peace, is esteemed wise. <laughs> is that? Even a fool, when he holds his peace, will be considered to be wise. So, you know, just, it's not good to, um, in the workplace, sit around and talk too much with your co um, colleagues, right? Uh, gossip, of course, is harmful, you know? The Bible says it um, in James that, um, you know, the tongue is a little member that kindles a great fire. A whisperer separates, separates um, friends. So basically, you know, not to sit around talking, telling secrets to each other, you know, or um, basically allowing your tongue just to go out and say whatever they, whatever you want to say. So, um, in fact, it says, uh, talks in the Bible, um, sowing discord is one of seven sins that God hates. So not to sow discord. What's sowing discord anyway? That means sowing discord is getting some of your colleagues to not like other colleagues, you know? You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. So, and it also says, um, where there is no wood, where no wood is, the fire goes out. So where there is um, no tail bearer, a strife cease. So basically it's saying if you know, you're not talking so much, the strife will cease, you know? And death and life are in the power of the tongue. That's in Proverbs 18, 21. Have you ever been crushed by really harsh words? Hmm? We all have, haven't we? You can crush a fellow worker by unkind criticism too. There's a story about um, Ben Franklin when he was a young man. He was very tactless and sharp-tongued, and he loved to argue and he loved to be right. And then an old Quaker, one of his, one of his, oh, he was a Quaker himself, but this old Quaker brought him to side and said, you know what, you're gonna go nowhere in life. You think you're a know-it-all and you're arrogant and pride, and you never control your tongue. And so then Ben Franklin began to listen and realize how he had been doing this. And so he started listening then to the opinions of others first, and basically not just giving his own opinion. So, um, and then his rule was to speak ill of no man, but to speak good of all. And he did this very well. And he learned how to speak well of people. And he even became an ambassador to France to get to be able to go to ambassador, to be a peace ambassador to France in the midst. You know who Ben Franklin is. 
Well, he started off, he started off being very witty and arrogant. So, but God changed him. So, um, also going, when you think about, you know, um, being, you know, being kind, but being also positive and negative. Um, oh, here's, before I get to there, I like what um, Abraham Lincoln said. He said, um, everybody likes a compliment. So the deepest principle in human nature is the craving to be appreciated. And Abraham Lincoln said, yes, everybody likes a compliment. Um, so compliment your fellow workers. Speak words of appreciation to them and do not forget the please and thank yous. So when they, when you ask, you, could you please do this? Oh, thank you so much. Also, you're welcome. Rarely do people say you're welcome these days. They'll, they'll just say, oh yeah, they'll say thank you. And you say, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Instead of saying, say you're welcome. You know, please, thank you, and you're welcome. Those are good words to get along with your colleagues. Positive and negative. So you can respond um, emotionally, and then you'll be um, really probably responding negatively. But if you respond rationally, you'll be able to think it through and respond positively. So um, there's, a, there's a story about Lauren and Melissa, and basically um, um, work as they worked together, uh, Lauren was going to be po positive at all times. In the midst, all things work together for good that love God and are, are uh, according to his, their purpose. And so basically, you know, in the midst of even disappointments, to encourage and be positive. Never take in a negative attitude in doing this. And you'll see this example in your book, and you can read that. So um, God loves us to praise instead of fret, right, and worry. As if in the midst of a situation, you're running around, you're so negative about this. I was kind of negative today about a few things that were happening. And then I thought, you know what? I need to put on the, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And in doing that, I need to smile more. And isn't that what God would have you do in your workplace? Say, okay, all these things are gonna be going wrong, but I'm gonna trust God and put on praise and praise your coworkers too you know, in the midst of all this and encourage them, encourage them not to fret, not to fret and not to worry. So let's see. There's a little um, last part here. I'm going to go over and we'll go on to the next video and actually the next chapter. So when relationships deteriorate, uh, scripture says in Romans 12, 18, if it is possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. So, so there's sometimes you're not going to get along, right? If it be possible. So sometimes, you know, to live at peace may not be possible. So there the scripture says, My soul hath, hath long dwelt with him that has peace. So I am peace, but when I speak, they are for war. So sometimes that happens. So when you're at peace, but they are at war, and no matter what you do, you can't bring peace in, and you try to bring peace in. So that's Psalm 120, six or seven. That said, he said, basically, I'm at peace, and when I speak peace, they keep speaking war, and that's what happens sometimes. So you may have to work with people of war, people that are not nice. And so, so what should you do? First of all, examine yourself and your actions. Um, have you shown goodwill? Have you put that person down? Do you need to apologize to them? Have you snubbed them or you know, criticized them or ignored them? Um, have you um, made an effort to restore a good relationship? Have you done all these things? So, and you think, man, I haven't done anything. And it's not your fault, you know, so, um, sometimes, sometimes things are not popular for doing right. They may look at you, oh, you know, you're a Christian. We don't really like these Christians. You're a goody good, you know, you don't drink and you don't party and you don't do these things. 
and not, you know, not like you. Well, don't lower your standards. You know, don't lower your standards. Don't go off, if they're going off and they're telling dirty jokes, you know, don't be part of that. Or they're going off and gossiping, don't be part of that, you know? Or if they're going off partying and drinking and, and all, don't, you know, stay away from those kind of situations. And do not, when they laugh at other people and make fun of other people, do not join in. Do not compromise your testimony, testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. So sometimes we will be persecuted because Jesus says in the world, we're going to have tribulations, but to be of good cheer because he has overcome the world. But in the world, because Jesus was persecuted, we're also going to be persecuted. So we know this at times. So um, if, if you bear reproach for the name of Christ, happy are ye for the spirit of glory and God rests on you. So if you're persecuted for Christ, it's a treasure. And in fact, um, persecution gives you treasures in heaven if you're standing up for the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, but let none of you suffer as a murderer, thief, evildoer, busybody. But if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but glorify God on this behalf. So glorify God if you, are, um, if you suffer as a Christian. Here, I like this from Romans. Um, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed them. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. What's this heaping coals on his on their head? I always thought, well, what, you know? Basically, you know, as you're standing for the Lord, they may be getting convicted and they may come, you know, to know the Lord because of that conviction. So, you know, one story I wanna lead, this is a story um, when I was in college. And so um, I had a Christian roommate, but most of the girls on my floor, they were just partying up all the time and they were, you know, weren't Christians. They were, you know, getting drunk. They were bringing guys in sometimes and, you know, um, and, you know, I was always just really nice to them and, you know, I gave them a gospel and, you know, and smiled and I played my Christian music. Well, uh, one girl got really upset and she started, she wrote my, myself and my roommate both this nasty letter like, you guys, you just think you're Christians, you're goody, good, good, and you, you think that we're lower than you, and it was a really nasty letter. And so my roommate, Lee, she, you know, she read it and she was very upset with it, like, wow, you know? And then I thought, you know, really, I think, I thought she's probably talking about me because I was playing music loud, you know, um, and when I was vacuuming and stuff and they were out doing whatever they were doing, and. And I didn't, so I thought, well, maybe I'll apologize and I'm playing my Christian music loud, you know? And so then I thought, but no way. They they basically, you know, didn't like me at all. But I just thought, well, I'm just gonna go on from here and see, see and be nice to them. And I believe they were very convicted. And some of them later on actually became friends with me. And one that wrote the letter, she didn't, but I feel like, hmm, it kind of did heap coals on her head when she felt convicted. And that's why she wrote the letter. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, conviction causes us, you know, to, to examine our lives. And she may have came to know the Lord through this whole thing. I don't know. But that's what I think it means. The coals on their head, basically they, they are upset because the Holy Spirit is trying to tell them they need to come to know Jesus. They need to live life, they need to repent of their sin. And most people do not want to repent of their sin, you know? But when they do, what freedom there is. So I just pray for them. I just smile and pray. It's hard to do sometimes because you think, man, that's really mean they said that about me, about the Lord. But the Lord will protect you and will cover you amazingly and wonderfully. And I've had 
you know, I've had people come back that were mad, friends that knew me, that said, you know, Mary Ann, you're just this Jesus freak and all these things, that have come back later on and said that they've got saved and thanked me for telling them about Jesus. So never regret when you're persecuted. And when you're persecuted, just keep on loving. Keep on showing, sharing Jesus. Keep on being an example. Keep on giving your testimony. Keep on, keep on looking up for redemption draw nigh.